Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Education USA Saturday webinars in India. Thank you for joining us. Today's session is on studying medicine in the US, the pathway after high school. Before I introduce today's speaker, I'd like to share some information about who we are and what we do. Education USA is a US Department of State supported body, and our mandate is to provide accurate, current, and comprehensive information to students looking to pursue higher studies in the US. We have seven advising centers in India and over 400 worldwide. For more information, please visit educationusa.state.gov. In our efforts to reach more students, we conduct virtual information sessions twice a month on Saturday at 10 a.m. We invite you and your friends to join us for these sessions where you can learn more about the different aspects of higher studies in the U.S. At this point, I'm going to ask all the participants to type into the chat box if you have any technical issues, and I will respond there and try to help you deal with them. At the end of the session, we will have a question and answer time, so I request that you keep your questions to the end. Um, for today's session, our speaker is Nina Gumadi. Nina is a Fulbright Nehru Student Research Scholar for 2018-2019 and a fourth year medical student at Boston University Medical School. Nina, good morning and welcome to the Saturday webinar. Thank you so much for taking the time to present the session for us. Now, um, before we begin the session, uh, we have three polls that we'd like you to respond to. This will help us, um, you know, get a better sense of you as our audience and it will help us tailor the session to your needs. So please respond to the polls. The first is a poll about your citizenship status. So if you could please respond to the poll. We just want to know whether you're an Indian citizen, a US citizen, uh, you may be an Indian citizen, but also have a green card or be a U.S. permanent resident. And if you're a citizen of any other nationality as well, if you could let us know. Okay, so we have um, responses. So we have about 56% uh, are Indian citizens, about 17% US citizens, and 28% citizens from other nationalities. Just wait for a little while to see if anyone else wants to respond. Okay, I'm going to launch the next poll. Um, We now want to find out which year or program of study you are currently in. So are you currently in grade 11? Are you currently in grade 12? Are you currently doing an MBBS? Or are you in some other undergraduate program? Okay, so it looks like the majority of you are in grade 11 and grade 12, about 25% in grade 11, 50% in grade 12, and about 25% in other undergraduate programs. All right. I'll just wait for a short while to see if anyone else wants to join this poll. Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, the final poll that we'd like to uh, uh, we'd like you to respond to is what um, level of study you're thinking of undertaking in the U.S. So, is that undergraduate study, um, medical school? So, normally, medical school is actually postgraduate at the postgraduate level in the U.S. Um, and or is it a residency or postgraduate study um, in medicine in the US? Okay, so we've got about 60%. Okay, it's changing, let's see. Okay, 
yeah, nearing 60% interested in undergraduate study, about 25% interested in medical school, and 20% in residency and postgraduate study. Um, just wait to see if anyone else wants to respond. And okay, I'm going to close this poll now. Um, so Nina, I hope that's given you a sense of our audience and uh, what um, our applicants are looking for. I think that's all from my side. We're ready to begin. The floor is all yours. Great, thanks. Um, Bob, now will you change the presenter view so I can share the screen? Great. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for that introduction. Um, and thank you all for being here this morning. Um, so my name is Nina, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about studying medicine in the US. Um, so just a quick disclaimer, first of all, um, I am a medical student at Boston University and currently a Fulbright scholar, but this presentation is uh, my personal experience and my personal views and do not represent the views of the Fulbright Commission or Boston University. A little bit about me before we get started. Um, I attended high school in Atlanta, Georgia and graduated in May 2012. And then I actually joined a combined BA MD program at Boston University. Um, there's not many of these programs and it's a little bit different than the traditional eight year pathway that is common in the US. And I can talk a little bit about that afterwards as well. Um, so in May 2015, I completed a BA in medical science with a minor in anthropology and then began medical school that August, <clears throat> sorry. Um, and then because I took this Fulbright year, my path has been a little bit different. I completed my third year last June and then started my Fulbright fellowship in India in August um, of last year. And I will be going back to the US in a couple weeks and starting my fourth year of medical school, which is my last year of medical school in June 2019. So I am set to complete medical school next year in May. Um, and I will be applying into pediatrics for residency. Um, so a little bit about what I'm going to talk about today. I'll talk, it seems like we have a fairly diverse audience. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about bachelor's degrees, the prerequisites for medical school, what medical school is structured like. Um, I'll touch a little bit on residency and then give you a few resources that you can look um, at. So I think one of the main uh, points and points of differences between the US and India for medical school is in the US medicine is a graduate degree um, and not an undergrad degree as it as MBBS is here. Um, so this is a little bit just a slide to sort of explain the combined degree pathway versus a traditional four by four four plus four pathway. Um, it seems most of you are nationals are not US nationals. And so it's very difficult to do a combined degree pathway as an international student. Um, so I won't talk too much about this, but basically in the US after high during high school in your uh, 11th class or fourth class, you'll be applying to college. And then in college or after you finish college, you would apply to medical school as a graduate program. And then at the la in the last year of medical school, you would apply to residency and complete that. Um, the combined degree pathway, which is usually a three plus four pathway, you would apply to during high school itself for both college and medical school as one program. And then in college, 
you would not need to apply separately to medical school. So it's sort of a um, combined um, route. And then you would still need to apply to residency during medical school. Um, so yeah, it's very uncommon. I had a, I have a question in uh, the sidebar about combined degree pathways. Basically, I, my understanding, and it's, it might not be true for all programs, but my understanding is it is quite difficult as an international student uh, to do a combined degree program, and there's not very many in the U.S. as well. There's only a few of these programs, and they only take a few students each. It's, no, it's definitely not the uh, usual way for even students in the U.S. to complete medical school. So prior to medical school, you must have a bachelor's degree. And this actually does not need to be in a science field. So this can be in any field that you are interested in. You might want to do a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science, but you could also do a Bachelor of Fine Arts, a Bachelor of Health Science, and there's many more bachelor's degree options that you could do. So you don't have to do a Bachelor of Arts in Biology or a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry or anything like that. Um, you could do Economics or Sociology, you could do a Fine Arts degree, a Language degree, um, or you could do something that is more science-based or something like human physiology or something like that, if that is what interests you. Um, and I, I guess before I move on to the next slide, what, I will, what I'll say is that for medical school, there are, a few, there are some prerequisites that are mostly science classes, but also some psychology, sociology, things like that. Um, and so, even if, if, you, if you do a biology degree, for example, you'll cover some of the prerequisites necessary for medical school within that degree program. If you do something else like international relations or political science, for example, you may not cover those prerequisites within your normal degree, but for your electives during your study, you can take those classes and cover them. Um, so you need not do a degree that's specific in science. And then this is relevant to a few of you. So this is for Boston University uh, School of Medicine in particular. I included this because that's my school and so I have the most familiarity with it. Um, but basically for international students who are applying to medical school for Boston University, it says you have to have completed two years of US or Canadian advanced education. So in this case, and it may not be true for all medical schools in the US, but for BU, if you want to apply to BU School of Medicine, you would have had to come to the US or to, the, or to Canada and do some sort of um, study there, whether that be your bachelor's degree or whether it's a master's degree in um, something else. Um, so that could be, so there are some master's programs that are two years that do some science courses or any or an MBA or anything like that. It just has to be some sort of advanced education. And then obviously you have to have completed all the prereq courses that are needed. Um, so depending on the medical school, there are different prerequisite courses, but they generally cover physics, chemistry, biology, biochemistry, calculus, English, sociology, and psychology. Um, these are constantly changing. When I was going into medical school only four years ago, um, you did not have to have sociology, and uh, psychology, or even biochemistry. Um, I, I hadn't taken a biochemistry class or sociology class, in fact. Um, so this is BU School of Medicine's um, prerequisite course. And as you can see on this slide, there is actually no um, sociology or um, even, yeah, or sociology or psychology requisite for this school. So it differs based on the school sometimes. Um, so prior to medical school for your application, you also want to have some extracurriculars that you um, can show to the school that you have been interested. 
not only in medicine, so you want to have some medical related extracurriculars like volunteering, um, shadowing, clinical experience, maybe medical research or science, uh, basic lab science research, something like that. But you also want to show them that you um, are a well-rounded student. So you want to have some non-medical activities on there too that are particular to your interests and something that you can talk about when you are doing your medical school interviews as something that you've been interested in and is important to you. And then you'll have to take the MCAT. So the MCAT um, has changed since I took it. It was um, out of 45 when I took it and now it, it, the scale is totally different and the content, there's been more content added. Um, so I pulled these numbers from the internet, but it says the average score is 510 for matriculants, which means students who are accepted and go to medical school. So the MCAT has four sections, biology and biochemistry, uh, chemistry and physics, and then they have a social science section, which has psychology, sociology, um, things like that. And then they have a basically an English language section, so a critical analysis and reasoning skill section where you read and you um, analyze. It's somewhat similar to the SAT uh, critical reading section. There are 230 questions total, um, and it's a long exam over six hours, and then there's a scaled score on each section. So when do you want to take it? Um, it depends on when you want to go to medical school. If you want to go to medical school directly after finishing undergraduate, so for example, you finish your bachelor's in May of 2020 and you want to start medical school in August of 2020, then you would need to take it during your third year of your BA so that you have time to apply and do interviews for medical school. Many people take it during their fourth year or they even take it after they finish uh, their BA and they use that extra time before they would start medical school to either have a job um, or do research or something else um, during a gap year or even two. It's very common for students in the US to take a year or two, two years off um, or even more before starting medical school. So yeah, so you just want to decide what your timeline is, um, when you want to be finishing your undergraduate and when you want to be starting your um, your medical school. And it, it varies for different people. Something that might um, influence it is how, how much you're able to study for the MCAT or take time to go do those interviews and everything during undergraduate. And that's why a lot of people do it afterwards and take some time off. Um, yeah, so this is a slide sort of discussing that. Several students take one or more gap years and during that time they might work, they might volunteer, um, do research, do a different degree like a master's or PhD program. Uh, this is very common and a good way to make your application stronger if you think you might have difficulty getting accepted into medical school. Um, and they take, they might take the MCAT and complete the application process during that time. So generally, people often ask me, um, how does that affect your application if you take time off? And actually, it's generally helpful. Um, it's more often difficult to get into medical school if you have not taken time off because generally students do something that's meaningful during that time. Uh, before medical school and so they're able their application is improved because of that And then you would be applying to medical school through the AMCAS service um, And then this is just a quick note that so medical school is because it's not a BA so it's not an MBBS um, is an MD program and then you can do combined programs in medical school. There are MD, PhD programs if you're interested in research as a career, MD, MPH programs if you're interested in public health as a career. There's also programs where you finish your doctorate and your law um, degree 
And if there's several of these sort of combined programs where you get two graduate degrees or postgraduate degrees. And this is a list of the ones that are um, available at BU. So there's an MBA program. Um, perhaps if you were interested in being a doctor who owned their own practice, maybe an MD, MBA program would be useful. Or if you wanted to finish your medicine, but then get into the business side of medicine, um, that might be a useful program. So just different things to think about. But then also, I just want to make a note that you don't have to do it in this combined program fashion to get another degree. Uh, it is helpful, especially for the PhD program, but if you wanted to do an MD and an MBA, you could easily do that without doing it as a combined program. Um, you would just have to schedule your time properly. So medical school, so MD is a four-year program at all schools in the US. Generally, there is eight, a year and a half to two years of classroom learning. Um, during which time you are also going to the hospital and seeing patients to learn basic skills like history taking skills, physical exam skills, things like that. But the majority of your learning is in the classroom and you're learning things like physiology and um, histology, pharmacology, all your basic sciences for medicine. And then after that, there is generally one year of core clerkships, which are the required clerkships at your school. This usually includes internal medicine, surgery, pediatrics, sometimes family medicine. You'll do OBGYN, psychiatry, and you might have a few electives available to you then as well. And then your last year of medical school is generally elective clerkships, which is um, you have the option to pursue what things you are interested in. And during that time, you would also be applying for residency. So residency, inter residency applications um, for most residency fields, so most specialties, are due in September. And then in general, interview season is October to January. And that changes a little bit depending on which specialty you are applying into. Um, and so during this time, you would continue to participate in extracurriculars. Of course, you're going to be completing an application for residency, so you need to have a strong application. Um, so you could do research, service learning, which is a type of volunteerism um, in which not only are you providing a service, but as a student, you are also learning from that experience and reflecting on it. Um, and there's a whole host of different things you could be doing, and you would also want to be doing the things that you are interested in, whether they are medical or not. Um, and then during this time, you would be taking step one and both parts of step two. Gen there are three step exams, step one, step two, step three, and step two is divided into two parts, so you would be doing the first three parts. Uh, step three, we generally take after our first year of residency. Um, so right, so step one is usually taken sometime during the classroom learning or core, core clerkship time period. And step two is generally after you finish those core clerkships. And residency program applications are due, are due through this program called ERAS, um, as opposed to AMCAS for medical school. And are general, that's for most fields. It's not true for every field, actually. Um, and right, so that's due in September. And then a little bit about residency. So usually it's around three to seven years of training. It depends on the field, of course. Um, you are paid, although not as well as you will be once you are finished your residency training. It is a lower wage, generally, and it's quite busy. Uh, very busy. And then some examples of uh, different, just different specialties, family medicine, pediatrics, internal medicine, um, a whole host, surgery, OBGYN. And um, I just it mentioned this to point out to you that there are, if you are interested, for example, in cardiology, 
that is not a residency specialty. You would be doing internal medicine during your residency, and then you would be doing a, spe a specialization or a fellowship, as we call it, in cardiology. Um, and for surgery, there are some sur surgical fields that are the same. So you would maybe be doing a general sur surgery residency and then completing a fellowship in maybe cardiothoracic surgery, for example. But there are some surgery fields that I have list a few that I've listed here, neurosurgery, plastic surgery, urology is a very surgical field um, that you do not do just you do not have to complete general surgery first. They are they're direct residency programs. Um, and residency, lots of teaching, research, advocacy, you learn a lot. It's um, on the job learning. Um, I have a quick question here that I'll address before I go on to this next slide. Um, someone asked, do we earn during core clerkships or elective clerkships? You do not earn money then. You're still in medical school. So in medical school, you are not earning. Um, in residency, you earn money. Um, and so this is for, I included this for those of you who are interested in coming to the U.S. for residency and not for your medical school. You're maybe interested in completing medical school internationally and coming for residency. So this depends on the state that you are applying to for residency. I included Georgia and Massachusetts because I grew up in Atlanta and go to a medical school in Boston. Um, but basically, if you complete medical school internationally, there are some additional requirements you need before you can get uh, state licensing. And you need state licensing to practice, um, even as a resident, because you are a doctor at that point. Um, and so these, these are for Georgia and Massachusetts, but it changes depending on uh, which state you would be going to. And so, yeah, a few resources that might be useful for you. AAMC, um, the Association of American Medical Colleges. This has a nice flow chart. As you can see at the top, choosing medical career, applying to medical school, attending medical school, applying to residency. They have an international student section um, right here, international med medical education, which is very useful. So you can see residency program requirements for international medical graduates and immigration information and um, different things like that. Um, and so I see a couple more questions. Um, there's one, if you don't get a residency, do you still get an MD degree? You do get an MD degree if you finish all your medical school requirements. Um, so that would be passing your step exams, passing all your uh, clerkships and um, the subjects and everything. And general yeah so basically if you complete medical school you, you get an md at the end of medical school uh residency is a separate issue but often you can't you you will not be employed as in very few people would hire you if you do not get a residency so in that case you may not be practicing clinically um but you could do consultant work, for example. You could work for a insurance company as a doctor who consults on the insurance cases or something like that, but you wouldn't be able to work generally directly with patients. Um, and then if there's any more questions, please put them in the sidebar. The other thing I wanted to address was cost of medical school in the US. Um, I, I don't think we had any US nationals or permanent residents so for international students medical school in the u.s you would be paying the you would be paying the full price of medical school um, unless you had a merit scholarship so a scholarship that was given to you from the school itself for your academic achievements or something like that um, which generally does not cover all of medical school it would just be um, in addition so sort of helpful um, in medical school, the cost varies greatly between schools. Um, Boston University, for example, uh, costs somewhere in the 50,000 to 60,000 US dollar range uh, per year, whereas Baylor Medical School in, Houston, in Texas, for example, costs 
almost half the price of that. It's around 30,000 or somewhere in that range. Um, so it varies greatly, but overall is quite expensive, um, especially if you are a international student who does not have access to US loans, which is generally how st students pay for medical school in the US, they'll take out a loan. You can still get private loans as a international student often, but you would not be eligible for any federal or state loans is what my understanding is. If you are a US citizen, the overall cost is not any different. It's not, there's not an international student price and a US student price. It's just that you are uh, eligible for loans and help paying for that in the US. Um, so that would be the difference there. Um, someone has a question about where people end up getting hired, private or government institutions. Yeah, so this is up to you. It's also a question during residency. It, when you're applying to residency, you can apply to programs that are um, private institutions or are government institutions. And it just changes the type of patients you will be seeing and um, the type of learning and experience you're going to have. But both are valid options, and there's a lot of reasons that you might want to apply to one or the other. Um, depending on what you want your future career to look like. As far as getting hired, people get hired at both private and government institutions. Um, that would be sort of based on where you decide to apply for jobs and what you're interested in and who, maybe who you're interested in uh, caring for. Um, any other questions? I think those are the ones I see so far. Um, if I could just chip in here, we had a question on the email about visas for um, uh, medical school and residency. So I just would like to say that we don't really uh, advise so much on the visa process. Uh, obviously, if you're in medical school, you will have a student visa. But for the residency, if you need more information, you can look up ustraveldocs.com forward slash in if you're uh, in India and uh, support hyphen India at ustraveldocs.com. Again, these are Indian um, resources, but US, ustraveldocs.com should have other uh, information for um, international students in general. So you can have a look at that website um, to find out more information. And there probably are other contact um, email addresses that you can contact um, if you're from another country. Great. Um, I see another question. Is AP Bio required for pre-med? Um, so there's actually no pre-med undergrad or be a bachelor's degree in the US for the most part. Um, so there's no requirements for your undergraduate degree in terms of you can, you don't have to, comp the only things you need to complete during high school are the things that are specific to whatever school you are applying to. So for example, some bachelor, some colleges or universities require that people take a foreign language or have a certain level of study um, for different programs. And so you would need to look at what schools you're applying to and what their prerequisites are for their school. Um, there's no such prereqs for pre-med. During, during undergrad for your bachelor's, you would need to be completing the prereqs for medical school. Um, so none of the things that you have done in high school go towards that those are you need to be completing college level courses for that um as an international student is it difficult to get a scholarship um as an international student is it difficult to get a need-based scholarship so it's difficult to get an it's difficult, sorry, a merit scholarship. It's difficult to get a merit scholarship no matter what. Um, in the, as a, there's very few of them um, for undergrad and 
I don't, I'm not actually even sure if there are any of them for most medical schools. Um, generally for medical schools, scholarships are based on need. So finance, your financial situation. Um, and I do believe for those, it is more difficult as an international student, although I can't say for sure that is true. Um, but it is difficult to get loans uh, and especially government loans. Um, someone asked about people applying from India for residency require a clearance document from Ministry of Health. I am not sure about that. Um, I can just check in here to say that you need to get your credentials evaluated by ECFMG uh, in order to apply for a residency. So uh, that's the Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates. So I think if you go to the website, the ECFMG website, you can have a look at um, the different steps involved and um, you know what's required from you. I think it's also linked to your enrollment uh, for the USMLE exam. So um, you do need to look into the, the ECFMG processes as early as possible. So do have a look at the ECFMG website. Great. Um, someone asked if I have not completed undergraduate, can I not apply for medical? So um, basically, if you're applying to medical school in the US, you need to, you will need to complete a BA before that. So it's not that you have to have completed it already, but you need to be in the process. So you, for example, in the US, uh, undergraduate students in their third or fourth year will be applying for medical school and they'll say on their applications I'm expected to complete my undergrad in one year or something like that similar to in high school when you're applying to colleges you apply during high school for your college program um, but you have to have finished that to begin your college program the one difference is if you are a medic if you are an international undergraduate students so say you're completing an a BA or a undergrad degree in India for example you would need to look specifically at the requirements for international students for the medical schools you are applying to um, so I included that one slide about Boston University for example BU requires that international students in addition to whatever they have completed abroad or internationally they need to have completed two years of um, higher education in the US or Canada. So that means that even if you completed a full undergraduate degree in India, for example, for BU at least, you would need to come to Canada or the US and complete some sort of um, higher education there, whether that's a master's program or taking some classes or um, doing a BA or undergrad degree there, um, but you need to have completed two years there as well. So that differs based on the medical school, but it's probably similar across medical schools. Um, so you would want to look at those, those requirements specifically. Um, and so a follow-up question, how can Indian, how can an Indian citizen get into medical school after 12th. So there is no medical school after 12th in the US for Indian citizens, for US citizens, for anyone. Um, you have to do an undergraduate degree to do medical school in the US because it is a graduate degree. So you have to have some sort of undergraduate degree. You can do your undergraduate degree quickly if you are interested in time. So I finished my undergraduate degree in three years instead of four years. Um, so that saves me a year. Um, but yeah, so that you have to you have to complete a undergraduate degree. Someone asked, do they look at base level GPA in undergrad to apply for medicine? Yes, they do look at your GPA. Um, they look at your overall GPA. They look at your science GPA. Um, they look at your MCAT score and they'll look at your extracurriculars and your essays. And then if they like those things, they'll 
invite you for an interview and you'll go to the school and you'll interview um, with people who work there in the admissions uh, department and then um, they will either accept you or deny you. Um, what is the ratio of international to national students getting in to post MCAT? So I think this question is regarding medical school, who, how many international students are getting in to medical school. That information, you should check out that AAMC website um, and the, all of that sort of uh, statistic, statistical information is available there. Um, but I would, it's not, it's not impossible to get into medical school from international uh, countries. It's uh, definitely a possibility. The one thing I will say, it, it would be, it's better to come as early to the US as possible. So it's, it's very common for international students to come to the US for an undergraduate degree. It's somewhat common for students to come to the US for medical school after finishing an undergraduate degree elsewhere. It's more difficult, although still fairly common, for students or now doctors to come to the US for residency. Um, and the re especially for residency, the reason is that most residency programs will prioritize not US citizens, that's not it, it's st students who have completed medical school in the US. So if you are a student who, who is an international student but came to the US for medical school or for undergrad but com and completed your medical school in the US, you have a better chance of getting the residency that you want um, later on. It's, it's harder, more difficult as an international student who's coming directly for residency. What are the requisites required for residency after you do your MBBS in India? Yeah, um, good question. So this depends on the program you are applying to, and it changes uh, a lot depending on what specialty you're applying to and where you, what program specifically you are requiring to, uh, applying to. So the slides that the slide that I included here is about state licensing, which is something that you need if you are going to residency because you have to be able to practice and you need your license to practice. Um, so for Georgia, for example, you need at least one year of postgraduate training. So that means that you cannot finish your MBBS and come directly. You have to finish one year in India. Um, for the USMLE step, for the step exam, it says that you can only do three attempts, which is common uh, even in the US. And then you have to have finished all of those exams within seven years. So those are, that's an example of the type of requirements that you might run into for licensing and it changes for residency. Depends, it depends on what the residency is. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions. Those are the ones that I see as of now. So I think um, that's a really good presentation, very detailed and really helpful to understand the different stages in the application process. Um, if you have any further questions, students, please do type them in. We still have a little bit of time, so we can take a couple of more questions. Um, <clears throat> All right, I think that may be the end of the questions. So, Nina, thank you so much for um, the presentation for answering the questions for you know guiding us through the complexities of the medical school journey and the residency journey 
And uh, thank you to everyone for attending this webinar. Uh, Nina has kindly put her email up on this slide, the last slide. So if you do have further questions, you can get in touch with her. You can also get in touch with us at Education USA. Um, my email address is on the email that you would have received um, for this webinar. But uh, you can also locate an Education USA Center near you on the Education USA website, which is educationusa.state.gov. So um, do have a look at that website and uh, feel free to get in touch with us if you have further questions. Thank you. Have a great day.